Howdy everyone, Aeroflame here with another video. I'm going to be posting a different kind of video today rather than a stream or a power scaling video. I'm going to be debunking a debunk of a tier list. Uh, this is a closed pins video and while I usually have no interest in debunks, the boys from Key Issues are actually close friends with mine and I had some involvement with the actual list that he tries to debunk in his video. And just to make it clear, neither Garrick or Nick asked me to do this. Uh, I will be using clips of closed pins video to uh, show exactly what I'm talking about when I'm addressing his points. Uh, I'll be skipping only to the parts that I feel I have a say in. Uh, there are certain things that I don't know about as I haven't watched every movie in the MCU. Uh, but I do have fairly decent knowledge on most of the movies. Uh, so... I'm not taking any of his clips out of context in the same vein that he was not taking any clips of Garrick's out of context. Rather, I'll simply be clipping the things that I have an actual problem with or I feel that he has gotten significantly wrong in the video and I don't plan to point out any real nitpicks other than this first one at the very beginning. So with that all out of the way, let's go ahead and get right into it. For videos for you guys. Not to discredit Nick. For a video where you pick apart Garrick at every point, the fact that you don't even know who made this video is kind of silly, but no worries, everyone makes mistakes. But however, watching this video, especially during the live stream, I actually showed that he lacked a lot of information and we are going to go through that. So for someone who's watched these films several times over, you've missed quite a lot of details. And we're gonna go You claim that Garrick has a lack of knowledge, but based on our debate, you don't seem to understand how certain scaling, feats, etc., and all of these things work. I'm going to be trying to be as respectful and kind as I can in this video, even though you attack my boy quite a bit in this video, just to show you what a respectful and uh, cordial debunk would look like. Space stone to create a black hole that was able to destroy the mirror dimension. Now, when it comes to that, I do want to point out things that are wrong. Not necessarily the fact that he's in the wrong tier list, but the wrong recollection of the movie. Again, for someone who's seen the movie many times, he gets things wrong. It was only strictly the Power Stone that destroyed the Mirror Dimension. If you watch it, very clearly, it's only a purple glow and nothing else when it comes to destroying the Mirror Dimension. When he punches straight through, just purple. Only Power Stone. Now, when he morphs it into a ball to throw at Strange, that is 100% the Space Stone. This is purely semantics, much like the vast majority of the debunks that you present in this video. When power scaling or tearing characters, things like semantics aren't all that important, especially when it's something as insignificant as misremembering a small part of the movie or misspeaking. Now, I agree, if Garrick had said that the space tone was able to do something that it couldn't, you should call him out. But while he doesn't directly strike the mirror dimension with the space stone as he does with the power stone, the space stone is ultimately what completely destroys the mirror dimension as he sucks all of the mirror dimension into the black hole before firing it at Strange. One could easily argue that sucking the remnants of the mirror dimension into a black hole would be a form of destroying it, but as I said, semantics. Strange beat Dormammu, a character that exists beyond space and time and has pretty much infinite power. So Doctor Strange is a character that definitely deserves to be in S tier. That's honestly, when I when I was live streaming, that was honestly something that I laughed really hard at and was very, very surprised that somebody would actually say. He did not beat Dormammu. Yes, he, he bargained with Dormammu. And he literally annoyed Dormammu and Dormammu left. If you want to consider that beating him, then that's fine. But don't say that he beat him, a man of infinite power. Clothespins contradicts himself here. He says that he annoyed Dormammu to the point where Dormammu left. That's beating him. Dormammu wanted to take Earth, the universe, whatever, into his dark dimension and Strange didn't want him to. So they had two conflicting goals when Strange entered the dark dimension. Then, they got into that whole scuffle, the I'm here to bargain thing, until Dormammu is literally begging to be set free. He'd become Strange's prisoner, so I'm not sure as to why you say he just ignored Dormammu as if he was an insignificant fly. Uh, he says that Garrick is missing a lot of knowledge, but you conveniently don't seem to remember this part of the movie. He seems to think that the only way to beat someone is just to overpower them, and says he only beat him via a time loop or with the time stone. 
That's hacks in a perfectly valid way to defeat someone in a versus battle or when comparing their powers to each other. Most controversial, and that's Scarlet Witch. And this character, I don't understand why people don't realize that this character is as powerful as she is. Okay. <laughs> I always, I laugh when people make these statements because it, it's almost as if trying to say, oh, a lot of people disagreed with this, but I, I am the one who knew that she belonged in S tier. It, it's not, it, by no means is it a controversial statement to put Scarlet Witch in S tier. Not one person I've spoken to has considered that controversial. To call it controversial is a, a, a claim of almost pseudo intellectual. I can't fault Clothespins for this specifically as he isn't a member of the Key Issues Discord where you can get some exclusive Key Issues content and come debate with me if you have any problems with this. But we had a lot of problems with people not wanting Scarlet Witch in S tier so that's what he's referring to here. Not a single person I've spoken to has considered that controversial. If everyone I've spoken to claims that the sun is green, does that mean that everyone in the world thinks that the sun is green? No, this is a very poor application of logic. He even goes as far as to say it's almost a claim of pseudo-intellectualism, directly after using faulty logic to try and prove Garrick's supposed pseudo-intellectualism. An unnecessary pot shot and one that is being held up by very poor logic. I don't understand the logic there. So their logic was that she was able to destroy the Mind Stone and be able to hold back the Space Stone at the same time. He says himself here, Thor was only able to do something similar to that when Thanos was caught off guard. But being caught off guard doesn't change the fact that he overpowered the power output of six different Infinity Stones. A little something to get into at last. Stormbreaker Thor versus Scarlet Witch. Clothespins claims that because Stormbreaker is able to cleave through the Infinity Stone's beam, that means he is significantly more powerful than Scarlet Witch, though he seems to have forgotten the significance of Stormbreaker. The writers and the director stated multiple times that Stormbreaker was made to counteract the effects of the gauntlet, so I'm not sure why you're equating this to his own personal raw power. Clothespin also makes the claim that he should be able to easily overpower Scarlet Witch's telekinesis, which I feel is a bit of an outlandish claim. Scarlet Witch was able to overpower Thanos in Endgame, who had just overpowered Stormbreaker Thor just minutes before. She was also able to crush Thanos in his armor, and, if you remember, Stormbreaker, even after being thrown, wasn't even able to slice through Thanos' skin deep enough to kill him at his thickest part, his chest. Meanwhile, Scarlet Witch is going to straight up crush Thanos, who was also wearing armor at this point. We can assume this armor is more durable than Thanos, as, if it wasn't, he wouldn't be wearing it. When talking about Thor vs Scarlet Witch, he once again thinks that the only way to defeat someone is to straight up overpower them, which I could argue Scarlet Witch could, but it isn't really the point as overpowering someone isn't the only way to win. He seems to think that Scarlet Witch is going to see Stormbreaker get thrown at her, then just try and stop it like Thanos did, which is silly. She has energy blasts that are capable of staggering Thanos and shattering his sword, which is able to survive a clash against Thornbreaker, and her telekinesis allows for her to simply immobilize Thor and crush him like she would have done Thanos. This means that her energy blast should be able to kill Thor pretty easily, as Stormbreaker was able to cut into Thor's chest even while he was using armor like a hot knife through butter, even when Thor was pushing back against Thanos to try and keep the blade from cutting into him. So once again, Clothespin shows that he doesn't exactly have the greatest grasp on certain characters' feats, though I won't fault him for it as everyone makes mistakes and the MCU is a gigantic verse with a lot of movies to watch. That's not where she went, Lightspeed. That is, not, that's, that is, I don't understand. For someone who supposedly watched these films so many times. I personally have never watched Captain Marvel, so I'm not sure what he's referring to here. But there's no reason for him to take these petty pot shots at Garrett like for someone who supposedly watched these movies so many times. Relax. You can make a debunk without being disrespectful, i.e. this. He wasn't winning the fight against the Hulkbuster version 2 until some plot-induced stupidity just caused him to lose. So Call Obsidian is a very durable character as well as a very uh, strong character. Ant-Man was able to take care of him without a second thought. So he uses plot-induced stupidity to justify it. 
but doesn't want to use the same logic of plot-induced stupidity to Captain Marvel. Alright, this is actually something I can talk on as I've seen Endgame. So, in my debate with Closemans and his friends, we got to this point and stayed on it for quite a while, as you could see in the video that he had up at one point, but ultimately took down. It's character. If Captain Marvel's character involves her not flying at her full speed on Earth, or in a planet's atmosphere, then that's just how it is. It may be stupid, but it's how she consistently behaves. Or, we can go along another line of reasoning and say she does fly at top speed while on Earth. That would scale everyone at the final battle massively faster than light because she doesn't see any of the people around her in slow motion, which would still make her massively faster than light travel speed irrelevant. Say that she couldn't do it on Earth because she because she never did. One, that's a normalcy bias fallacy, or say normalcy bias fallacy. Just because it didn't happen means it can't happen. Also, it's arguably an argument from incredulity. So. Those are two fallacies that it falls under. Maybe even appeal to ignorance, but many things. Either way, saying, oh, because she never did it on Earth means she can't do it, even though she's done it in space, literally carrying a ship too. So that is, that is the incredible leap of logic here. This happened multiple times in our debate, and it's even seen in this video. Clothespin uses normalcy bias incorrectly. The normalcy bias or normality bias is a belief people hold when considering the possibility of a disaster. It causes people to underestimate both the likelihood of a disaster and its possible effects because people believe that things will always function the way things normally have function. He tries to equate this to this argument and very obviously misuses it. He also tries to use an argument of incredulity, which he also uses incorrectly. The argument from incredulity is a logical fallacy that occurs when someone decides that something did not happen because they cannot personally understand how it could happen. There was no such argument. What was said was that she wouldn't do something like use her massively fast and light travel speed for combat purposes because she has never been shown to do this. In fact, him saying that she will do this because she can is an appeal to probability. An appeal to probability, or appeal to possibility, is the logical fallacy of taking something for granted because it would probably be the case or might possibly be the case. Inductive arguments lack deductive validity and must therefore be asserted or denied in the premises. An example would be, something can go wrong, premise, therefore something will go wrong, invalid conclusion. Or, Captain Marvel can fly at a massively faster than light speeds, premise, Therefore, she will fly at massively faster than light speeds in combat. Invalid conclusion. So not only does he fail to accurately identify logical fallacies within his own argument, but it turns out that his own argument is actually fallacious. And that's all the problems and debunks that I have with this video. Something nice, quick, and easy. Close pins if you're watching this and you want the smoke. We can certainly meet up in a neutral server, as you clearly don't like debating in the key issue server, and I was banned from your server after I bested two of your mods in a debate, though I won't say any names. If anyone from Clothespin's server wishes to debate me, both the key issue discord and my own personal discord number will be in the description down below. Uh, it's been a good day, y'all have a good day, uh, arrow out.